Hello, and welcome back to the Prentice Hall Biology Textbook. Today we'll be covering Chapter 12, DNA and RNA. Section 12-1, DNA. So to understand genetics, biologists first had to discover the chemical nature of the gene. And this started with early experiments, uh, first done by Griffith. So Frederick Griffith used two strains of pneumonia, a lethal strain and a non-lethal strain. And with these strains, he injected them into mice, and mice injected with the lethal strain had died. And Griffith wondered if the disease-causing bacteria might produce a poison or killed the mice through other means. So he heated up a lethal strain and injected the mice with the heated lethal strain. And to his surprise, all the mice survived. So next, he then mixed the heat-killed lethal bacteria with the non-lethal bacteria and injected that new strain into the mice. This killed the mice, and he found lethal bacteria in the mice's lungs. So the heat-killed bacteria had passed their disease-causing ability to the harmless strain of bacteria. And this process is called transformation, when one strain has been transformed into another. And Griffith hypothesized that some factor was transferred from the harmful bacteria to the harmless, and that that factor must contain information that could change harmless bacteria into harmful, and the transforming factor might be a gene. Next, we have Avery and his experiments with DNA. So Oswald Avery and a group of scientists repeated Griffith's works to determine which molecule was responsible for transformation. And so they did this by uh, destroying a um, number of different molecules in the bacteria, and then would attempt transformation. So they first destroyed proteins, lipids, carbohydrates, and other molecules, including the nucleic acid RNA, but transformation still occurred. But when they destroyed DNA, transformation did not occur. So they discovered that the nucle nucleic acid DNA stores and tram transmits the genetic information from one generation of an organism to the next. Next, we have the Hershey-Chase experiment. So Alfred Hershey and Martha Chase, so they worked with bacteriophages, which are viruses that uh, infect bacteria, and they're composed of DNA or an RNA core and a protein coat. So Hershey and Chase reasoned that they could determine which part of the virus, the DNA or the protein, infected the cell. And they then could learn whether genes were made of protein or DNA. So they used this by uh, with radioactive uh, markers. They did, they injected one, or they uh, added one radioactive marker into the DNA and one a different radioactive marker into the protein coat. And so then by injecting the viruses into cells, whichever radio marker showed up in the DNA would be the uh, tell them if it was the protein coat or the DNA core, and it was the radioactive marker from the DNA core of the. Uh, virus that showed up in the cell's uh, DNAs. So they concluded that the genetic material of the bacteriophage was DNA, not protein. Okay, next we have the components and structure of DNA. So DNA must complete these three tasks. The genes have to carry out information from one generation to the next. Uh, DNA has to put, and they have to put that information to work by determining the heritable characteristics of organisms. And genes had to be easily copied because all of a cell's genetic information is replicated every time a cell uh, divides. So DNA is a long molecule made up of units called nucleotides. And each nucleotide is made up of three basic components. There's a five carbon sugar called deoxyribose a phosphate group, and a nitrogenous or nitrogen-containing base. So there are four different nitrogenous bases. There's the purines, which have two rings in their structure, and the purines are adenine and uh, guanine, and then there's the pyrimidines, which have one ring in their structure, and that's cytosine and thymine. So the backbone of DNA is formed by sugar and phosphate groups of each nucleotide, and the nitrogenous bases stick out sideways from the chain. And the nucleotides can be joined together in any order. Okay. Now we have uh, Chargraff's rule. So Chargraff discovered the percentages of uh, guanine and cytosine and the percentages of adenine and thymine were almost equal in any sample of DNA. And he was unsure why of this, but uh, later on they figured out why. Next we have X-ray evidence. So in the early 1950s, Rosalind Franklin used a technique called X-ray diffraction to get information about the structure of DNA. So she purified a large amount of DNA and then stretched the fibers up in a thin glass tube and this, li and this lined, the str lined up the strands in parallel. So she discovered an X-shaped pattern which shows that the strands of DNA are twisted around each other like coils of a spring. And this is a shape known as a helix and it all, her uh, X-ray pattern suggested that there are two strands of DNA.
So then the double helix. So Francis Crick and James Watson were trying to understand the structure of DNA by building 3D models. And when they saw Franklin's x-ray, they were able to build a structural model that explained how DNA could complete its three, three main tasks. So their model was a double helix in which the two strands were wound around each other, and it didn't. They didn't. Ex this model did not explain what forces held the two strands together. However, they did discover that hydrogen bonds could form between certain nit nitrogenous bases. So the hi the hydrogen bonds could form between adenine and thymine, and uh, guanine and cytosine. And this is called base pairing, and it explains Chargraff's rules. Um, for every uh, adenine, there has to be an, an opposite thymine, and for every guanine, there has to be an opposite uh, cytosine. Okay, now we have 12.2, chromosomes and DNA replication. So prokaryotes lack, this is just a quick cover of the, uh, of the cells. So there's two types, there's the prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So prokaryotes lack nuclei, so their DNA molecules are located in the cytoplasm, and most pro prokaryotes have a sing single circular DNA molecule that contains nearly all of the cell's genetic information, and it's referred to as the cell's single, single chromosome. And many eukaryotes have as many as 1,000 times the amount of DNA as prokaryotes, and this is located in the cell's nucleus in the form of a number of chromosomes or uh, chromatid. So DNA length. DNA length is surprisingly long and it must be folded in order for it to fit all in the cell. Uh, chromosome structure. So the nucleus of a human cell contains more than a meter of DNA. And each and the DNA is con uh, the chromosomes contain both the DNA and the protein, which is tightly packed together to form a substance called chromatin. And then the DNA is tightly coiled around um, proteins called histones and these uh, histones form a structure called a nucleosome, which are able to fold enormous amounts of DNA into the tiny space available in the cell nucleus. Here we can see the histone with the uh, DNA strands wrapped around it, and this is able to be coiled up into just kind of a bundle of uh, DNA cr uh, and chromosomes. Okay, next we have DNA replication. So DNA replication. So the prokaryotes... La uh, oh, sorry. Uh, fuck. So here we have DNA replication. So the double helix structure explains how DNA can be uh, easily copied. Each strand has all the information needed to con reconstruct the other half by the mechanism of base pairing. If you separate the two strands, the rules of base pairing will allow you to reconstruct the base sequence of the strand. So in most prokaryotes, DNA replication begins at a single point in the chromosome and proceeds in two directions until the entire chromosome is replicated. In eukaryotes, DNA replication occurs at hundreds of different places. So, uh, duplicati duplicating DNA. Replication proceeds in both directions until each chromosome is completely copied. Uh, and replication is the process of duplicating DNA, ensuring that each resulting cell will have a complete set of DNA molecules. During DNA replication, the DNA molecule separates into two strands and then produces two new complementary strands following the rules of base pairing. Each strand of the double helix of DNA serves, serves as a template for the new strand. So how replication occurs? So replication is carried out by a series of enzymes, and these enzymes unzip a molecule of DNA, the uh, hydrogen bonds between the nitrogenous bases are broken, and the two strands unwind. And then these uh, enzymes and regul regulatory molecules uh, are uh, then used to copy the DNA. The principal enzyme involved is called DNA polymerase, and it uh, joins to an individual nucleotide to produce a DNA molecule, which is a polymer. This also proofreads each new DNA strand, helping to maximize the odds that each molecule is a perfect copy of original DNA. We're going to cover 12-3, 12-4, and 12-5 in the next video.